Back to GMT, I'm Geetha Goramuthi. Almost two decades ago, 21-year-old Matthew Shepard was brutally attacked, tied to a fence and left for dead in the US city of Laramie, Wyoming. Days later, he died in hospital. He was attacked because he was gay. Matthew's death shocked America and prompted calls for tougher federal hate crime laws. Until now, his parents have kept his ashes at home, partly out of concern that any memorial might be vandalised. But today, Matthew will be laid to rest at the Washington National Cathedral. Well, LGBT issues are at the forefront of much political talk in the US right now. On the weekend, the New York Times article reported on a leaked memo suggesting that the Trump administration wants to narrow the legal definition of gender so that it's determined by the genitals a person is born with. Well, we're going to go over those issues now with Shijuade Kadri, the chief advocacy officer at the organisation, the centre in New York that represents the LGBT community. Thanks very much for joining us. It is absolutely shocking, really, even to read now the details of Matthew Shepard's death. One can't imagine the agony his parents have been through. How much does it mean to people there that he is now finally going to be given a proper memorial? I think it's really important for the community, especially given the current tensions that we face and sort of uh, vitriol coming from the federal administration to see that Matthew is being honored in this way. I think it's an opportunity for him to be recognized and really on behalf of the countless victims of hate crimes, violence in the LGBT community to have him interred at the National Cathedral. And have people been talking about this case? Do you think people know about the details about how he died? When Matthew Shepard died, it rocked the nation, right? It was a really brutal and visceral and visible attack on the community. And his parents really worked tirelessly to make sure that his death would not be in vain. It was really impactful, I think, for the LGBT community, but of course for allied communities around the country, recognizing that we needed to do something stronger at the federal level to ensure that there were protections against hate crimes act for most vulnerable community members such as lgbt individuals and communities of color and so forth and so on and now obviously things are very polarized in, in so many ways politically in the us uh, we, we see that it's reported that president trump is, is thinking of changing uh, some of the regulations on on gender identity what, what do people make of that there you know, there's a Rumi saying, uh, something along the lines of where the wound is, that's where the light can be let in. I think that what we're seeing from this federal administration, especially before the elections, is uh, the desire to polarize those who are most likely to be excited by legalizing hate in this way. And while the New York Times article highlights the potential for these regulations to take place, what we see from within the LGBT community and other activists is that we won't let this stand. LGBT individuals have existed long before we were quote unquote legally sanctioned to exist and no piece of paper law or regulation is gonna dismantle that. But what we really need to do is take this opportunity to figure out how we can continue to unify and advocate for the sort of change in the laws and regulations that will be protective of community, particularly of transgender and gender nonconforming individuals and really within that trans women of color who are the most brutalized and least protected, we really want to take this opportunity to have our state stand up, particularly New York State, and make this an opportunity to show that we can protect, working together, the LGBT community. We see Kathleen Jenner, the transgender activist, saying she, she is now questioning her support uh, for Donald Trump's administration over this. But do you think that the president's position really won't make that much difference to Democrat Republican support overall because, you know, the, the base support is probably pretty clear, isn't it? You know, it's hard to say. I think that we're living in such fraught times right now. You know, Caitlyn Jenner's op-ed was an opportunity for her to talk about her own uh, progression and beliefs. But I think right now we're talking about issues that are above partisanship. We're talking about basic civil liberties being enshrined in the law. And the United States was founded as a democracy under this belief that we have the right to be self-determinative of who we are and who we want to be and how we exist. And so while the Trump news may 
affect the base. I think that people are really trying to reckon now, what do we want this democracy to be moving forward? And some of these partisan politics may make no difference in that. I think folks are thinking above sort of uh, the right, the left, and the center and trying to think, what do we really want to do to move this nation forward? Okay, Shijoy Kadri, many thanks indeed for joining us today. Thanks. Thank you. I am on Twitter at 